hey good morning everyone this is janine and welcome to my channel hope all is well in your world today i want to talk to you about negative self-talk and and weight loss and how i'm trying to overcome that uh, if you're just joining me then you know that i'm on a journey to lose 85 pounds there are other videos and playlists on this channel bible art journaling planning videos, food hauls, etc. But for the time being, I'm very much focused on my health and on my weight loss. So I hope that you will just listen and be inspired. Drop a note in the comment section if you have something helpful to say. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about, um, let's talk about negative self-talk. So um, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this topic was that during one of the workouts uh, recently and as a matter of fact I have a clip coming up I just found myself really beating down on myself I became aware that my internal thought process during the workout was negative <clears throat> that is called metacognition uh, human beings have the ability to reflect on our own thoughts <clears throat> it is a skill though many of us um, are not aware of the content of our thoughts um, I'm I'm actually I actually have a background in mental health so I'm trained as a therapist and one of the things that I learned when I was actually practicing was that it was very difficult to implement certain um, interventions cognitive behavioral interventions because people were not aware of what they were thinking <clears throat> so first I had to teach them the skill of being aware that they were thinking is the first thing I mean we know that we're thinking but there's another level of awareness that you need and then also to actually take the time to identify the content of their thoughts so once we were able to get to the whole idea of it's important to monitor the content of the thoughts, then we could then work on identifying what those automatic thoughts were. So <clears throat> in a nutshell, it's important to think about what you're thinking about, especially when it comes to weight loss or any t other type of um, change, really significant change. So, um, some of my negative self-talk is particularly during a difficult workout where I am doing a lot of, where I'm doing body weight movements is I hate this. I will start to think literally, I hate this. I am so fat. Uh, this is just terrible. Why am I doing that? And <clears throat> the triggers really are the the body sensation so the I got junk in the trunk so my butt is jiggling and I feel the, my white the weight of my thighs moving and I do wear a sports bra so it's not really um, boobs bouncing but uh, I'm just aware of um, the movement of my body the position of my body and the the size of my body um, when i'm doing those body weight movements in a way that's very different than if i'm doing something like a deadlift which i happen to be good at deadlifts so if i'm deadlifting and i'm moving the bar i'm really focused on not moving me moving my body that much um so, you know, things are tight, my lats are engaged, my core is engaged, my, I'm really thinking about the position, and it's kind of a stiff movement as, com as compared to a movie, movement like a bodybuilder or a burpee where my whole body is engaged and moving in a different way. So, um, during this workout, and I've got a clip inserted, I, I just, I caught myself thinking, um, very negatively and sometimes other thoughts are when I'm in this negative self-talk cycle not necessarily exercising 
I mean, I will think about, oh, I'll just, I'll, um, oh, I've lost some weight. Now I can eat, uh, which is ridiculous. I can always eat, right? Um, oh, I'll just, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, that's not that negative, but <clears throat> it's not helpful. Um, old and unattractive. I'll start thinking about like that. I have no discipline, uh, but really, um, often negatively, I'm just so fat. Um, so this definitely leads to feeling like a failure, feeling a really profound sense of failure, um, and shame, uh, especially if I come across a photo of myself of when I was a smaller size. Um, I was always, actually I was not always overweight. Um, there was a point during my childhood that I started gaining weight. Um, and then I was that chubby kid. Of course I got teased. Um, and then there've been some fluctuations during my adulthood, pretty dramatic fluctuations actually. Um, which I feel really embarrassed about. So when I was thinking about the whole negative self-talk, um, I was thinking, okay, how do I, how do I feel, you know, when I'm thinking that way? Um, I definitely feel ashamed to mention that I feel like a failure. It's totally saps my enthusiasm and motivation. And there have been times in my life, not so much now, and I'm so grateful because uh, I'm in communities that are supportive and nurturing and encouraging and, and loving. <clears throat> there, were t there are times in my life when I just really wanted to be invisible. I didn't want to be seen. And uh, I did what I had to do. So I went to work, I went to church, uh, I did what I was obligated to do, but I had really withdrew. And it was definitely depression there <clears throat> and sadness. So um, I think one thing that's critical when you're working on losing weight is um, being in community and being surrounded by supportive people uh, and actively avoiding abusive people um, if you're in that type of situation and I am not. Uh, praise God. <clears throat> so abusive, I was thinking about, I very intentionally called to mind um, times when I was called fat, times when I was a fat ass, times when I was called lard ass, um, gorda, um, just the rejection. And that led me to think about a relationship I had many years ago, I thought I would marry this gentleman and he was very preoccupied with the way I look. And I was not, I definitely was not obese. <clears throat> and probably according to the doctor's chart, I probably should have lost about 15 or 20 pounds more, but I had got my weight down. I'm not because of him, but because I wanted to be healthy. And frankly, I had started moving again. Uh, was finishing up graduate school and I mean, just everything. And so, that wasn't helpful either. Just the over controlling, everything about my hair, how I smiled, literally he thought I smiled too much. What I wore, the types of shoes that I wore, uh, just a real hyper concern with my <clears throat> appearance. And it really did get in my head. And when I was finishing up my degree, I put some weight on. I mean, I just, I just did. And I, and I, and it came on so fast. And it's one of the things about me is the times when my weight has swung. Now this whole, what I'm experiencing now has been a bit more insidious. Uh, but I, when I think about the big weight gains that I had, um, I didn't even, I really didn't realize what I was, that I was gaining that much weight. Um, I'm looking down at my notes because I really wanted to hit a couple of things. So the whole shame, guilt thing for me leads to avoidance and then these restriction overeating cycles. I am going to talk about how I'm trying to overcome this um, with help, with support. Um, so my default is actually to restrict and when I first started 
losing weight this first time, like seven years ago. I said first time, this time. Um, and I was considering gastric bypass. And I mean, I, I really wasn't heavy enough for the gastric bypass, but um, I, I went to uh, a weight loss specialist and he talked to me, he listened. And he said, you know, I just want you to eat three meals a day, at least 1500 calories a day. And your first meal has to be before one o'clock in the afternoon. That was the prescription. Eat three meals a day, at least 1500 calories a day. And your first meal has to be before three o'clock in the afternoon. Guys, I was very heavy and I was not eating. I, I, I was not eating regular meals. I was not eating enough calories often. Um, of course, there were times when I was hungry, so I would binge on the wrong foods. And I started losing weight. And I started moving again. Um, and it's amazing that all these years later, so I've been kind of in this weight range, which is definitely a plateau. Um, well, I think the plateau had broke between November and um, July, and I've, I've gained weight, so I'm really nervous but uh, and motivated to action. But the, the plateau was within a pretty tight range. Um, and so it has been difficult even all after all these years, and I know better than to restrict when... Um, I start gaining or I've gained weight and I'm now I'm not avoiding, you know, getting on a scale. I'm not avoiding that my clothes don't fit the way I want them to. Uh, my default is still to restrict. And I, even though I know that it doesn't work, I took a lot of seconds to get that one point across. But um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is the whole failure and shame for me definitely leads to a cycle of avoidance restriction and overeating and where did that come from i just developed that over time there was definitely negativity from the past and then compound that with my own guilt and shame and negative self-talk so now that i'm really aware of it um that's just something to to keep on the radar um, and just push through those workouts where I know I'm going to be doing those body weight movements and I may be feeling uncomfortable and um, it's, it's still a struggle but that's quite all right so I'm going to insert a clip of this um, last CrossFit workout it was not graceful at all and if you want to skip to the end um, on what my strategies are to come overcome this negative self-talk, then just, just go ahead and skip right to the end. So for the workout, the Metcon, it was CrossFit Open 20.1 and I scaled it. I'm using a 35 pound bar and actually at the very beginning of this clip, you see me repositioning myself so that I don't have my back to the camera. Uh, it was eight hang power cleans and then once I got the bar to my shoulder I did a push jerk yeah I believe that's a push jerk I think I got my terminology right and then I did eight bodybuilders over the bar I've been doing CrossFit for several years now and over time I found a much more comfortable handling the barbell, which is great. Um, the weight that I'm 
using right there really is not too heavy for me and one of my challenges is to make sure that my form is really good for example i'm noticing that my elbows probably aren't quite forward enough um and i tend to land pretty straight legged instead of that quarter squat um however um still handling the barbell bell is much more comfortable than those body weight movements like doing burpees or doing um, bodybuilders over the bar. So uh, yeah, it was at this point in the workout when I'm just trying, to, and you can probably see from my facial expression that I'm not enjoying it, where I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that negative self-talk um, kicked in. And then I really had to give myself a talking to, to break that negative. Um, cycle. So I hope after seeing that clip, you can see that, you know, if I can do it, you can do it, right? We already discussed Be Wise about it. Um, I really enjoy the CrossFit gym I belong to. I enjoy the community. The coaches are trained and they're really interested in more than just getting numbers in uh, so they can make money. I, that's, I appreciate that. It's not a money, um, it's not a money grab. They do a lot of um, best value added. But back to overcoming the negative self-talk. So awareness is key. Um, I'm aware of it. In the moment when I was in that workout, I became aware that I was thinking very negatively. And the front refrain was, I really hate this, I'm so fat. And I actually said, stop it. Uh, I am grateful that I can move my body. There are people who would love to be able to do a workout like this. I am here for a purpose. And yeah, I feel uncomfortable with my size. I'm gonna do something about it. So uh, I had, I gave myself a talking to um, in the moment. And um, we're just gonna do the best that we can, can do. And sometimes when I'm at the gym, I will actually say it out loud when um, the coach is going through the workout um, in advance and I'll think, oh man, this is gonna be really hard. And I'll say, you know what? I'm just gonna do the absolute best that I can do. So in the moment that helped me to just recognize, stop and reframe and keep moving. So um, one of the things that I don't do, I, I believe I have never done this. I will not just stop a workout and just and walk out or just give up. Uh, I do um, persevere and even if I have to scale that movement way, I don't want to say down, but scale it um, and nobody else is. I've been in a class, I've been the only one scaling a workout, then I'm, I'm going to scale. I want to get healthy, but I also want to avoid injury, right? I'm not trying to, well, I take, I started to say I'm not trying to keep up with the 25 year olds, but the fact of the matter is for many of the workouts, I can keep up with them. And uh, as long as I'm scaling it properly, I'm gonna get that stimulus and I'm gonna get that, that workout in. And we, often we finish right around the same time because I'm doing it appropriate for me. But anyway, uh, my point is sometimes um, I'm the only one scaling a particular movement and that is okay, that is okay. I do have a nutrition coach. We're gonna check in today at six o'clock. So I'm looking forward to talking to her. And Megan is really good at letting me know when and she's so gentle um, and professional when i'm i've slipped into that all or nothing thinking and to help me reframe uh, my thought process so i do have a nutrition coach who's helping me with that i also have a therapist now uh it's really taboo for a lot of people especially in the african-american community um but i went back to therapy specifically when I recognized this weight thing, because um, at that time I recognized I had gone through a couple of cycles of losing weight and then I would gain like between five and eight pounds and stay there. But more importantly, I was having a lot of anxiety about the weight loss. And uh, I've learned a whole lot. There's a whole lot going on since I was in grad school. Um, we were encouraged to go to therapy. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a mental health provider. You need your own therapist. Uh, so you 
probably notice I said back to therapy. Yeah, when it's when I think it's important to have it, I do have it, especially if I'm practicing myself um, and serving clients, then I will often have a therapist. But <clears throat> uh, back to the therapy. So yeah, so I've got a nutrition coach, I've got a therapist, and I found that I just have so much healing to do uh, from just stuff. And I won't even go into it. Um, if you got a nutrition coach, if you got a therapist, I mean, don't mind revealing that, put a comment in the comment section, you know, encourage somebody else. Um, also, how do you deal with your negative self-talk? Are you aware that you're doing that? That what has worked for you? Maybe you have a strategy that I, I haven't mentioned in this video and um, it will help people, it will help me, it will help other people. So I'd love if you would share that. Um, I've talked a lot about my routines. So I'm working on routines and building habits, which I hope are gonna help balance out the emotional eating. Not even balance out, maybe mitigate is a better word because I will be doing things um, to support my nutrition and fitness and really my overall wellness habitually they become automatic and I just simply do them they're part of the way that I live and then I'm not so overcome by um, emotional eating and we I think we all sometimes want to eat I mean it could be celebration it could be sadness it could be one of those get a pint of ice cream type things and eat it all it could be cake whatever your thing is but, um, and those moments are gonna happen, but what I don't want that to happen for me is for that moment to continue. Okay, uh, and if I decide to, oh, this cookie is definitely comfort food eating, have the cookie and, and move on. Um, I don't wanna be overcome. I don't wanna be lost in the emotion of it. And um, finally, I have a book. I love books. I read a lot and I've been listening to books and it's called Self-Compassion. It's written by Dr. Christian Neff. She really pioneered the study of this field. And I started listening to it as an audiobook, and then I bought the book so that I could work through the exercises. And let me tell you something, it's work. It's a lot of work. And so I worked through some exercises, put it down. This is how I'm treating the book. Work through an exercise, put it down. Um, and so, um, yeah, I believe that self-compassion for me will be critical to my journey um, to wellness and to a healthy weight. Video's already a little long. I think I'm gonna leave it there. Um, would love to know what you think about this and what you're doing to be compassionate to yourself, to um, dealing with negative self-talk if you're, if you're experiencing that. Um, and, and where you are uh, in your journey to wellness. Thank you for people who have reached out to encourage me. People have been sending me messages and I really appreciate that uh, tremendously so we can support one another. It is it's quite a journey. It's quite, not only is it a journey, but it takes a lot to lose a significant amount of weight and uh, you really can't do it by yourself, uh, I believe, successfully. So yeah, thank you so much for the support and thank you for listening to this video. Uh, and until next time, bye now. I hope all is well in your world.